Hey guys, welcome back to Yosef in the Wild. Um, I know that we've been doing Hebrews 11 and looking at the Hall of Faith and doing a character study, but this week we are going to start a new series within Yosef in the Wild where we're going to be taking a look at the fruit of the spirits. And so we can find this passage in Galatians. And so we are going to look at a few different passages today, but um, essentially the Fruit of the spirits is um, different attributes that are going to show and be visible to others around us um, of how we know that we are walking right with God and that we are um, attuned to his spirit and that we are doing things through his strength and his power um, as we walk through our lives. And so um, there's a lot of different attributes and just like how it's called fruits of the spirit because it's similar to like a tree. You know that it's healthy and it's doing well when it can produce fruit. And so this is basically a telltale sign that any of these things that we have that um, are listed in this passage are going to be um, signs that we are doing well within our souls and within our spiritual walk as we go along with God and we are being guided by his Holy Spirit. And these things can only be produced to the way that they're described in the Bible if we are walking with him. So let's read this and then we can talk a bit more about it. So we can find the passage in Galatians 5, 22 is where we're going to start. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Um... So we can see here that we can have love, we can have patience, we can have kindness, joy, goodness, faithfulness, like all of these things. Other people who are not walking with God can have that. But there's a difference in the way of how it should be produced um, that it's described in the Bible of the caliber. And we're going to look into that a little bit more because I think we can all... Um, know that we can love people well, have patience or gentleness towards other people. But the difference is, is that can we do that when it's hard to? Can we love somebody when it is really hard to love them or it's really hard to show love? Um, can we be gentle towards somebody or patient towards somebody who's really frustrating us? Um, I think that the Bible um, very clearly shows that as much as we want to produce those things we will never be able to fully show these fruits of the spirit unless we are walking with god and so we're going to start um today's uh lesson and have it be all focused on the first one which is love and so we have a ton of passages that we know about love that are within the Bible. The most famous passage in the world is God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And so John 3.16 is the most known passage and it's all about how God loves so deeply. And so clearly love is a very important thing that we um, are seeing as being a theme of the Bible weaved throughout. And um, it also is important in the way that we show love to other people and how um, we really kind of utilize God's love through us to be able to love others. And so we're going to take a look at 1 Corinthians 13. Um, <clears throat> this is another famous passage about love. So go ahead, flip there. I'd love for you guys to read this as well. Um, so 1 Corinthians 13, it says, If I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so I can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions, and I, if I give over my body in order to boast, but do not have love, I am I gain nothing. 
Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It is not boastful. It is not arrogant. It is not rude, not self-seeking. It is not irritable, and it does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. So we see here that the way that love is described in this passage, um, that is really hard um, out of our own power and strength to match that kind of love, to not count the records of wrongs, um, that to not have a self-seeking part of it, to not have irritability as we love people. Um, the way that we are called to love people um, based off of this passage is really, really hard to do unless we have God with us, unless we are walking with him um, to know how to love people well, and we're relying on him. And I think the best part about um, the fruit of the spirits is knowing that these are not expectations that we have to meet that are impossible for us to meet. They are impossible for us to meet when we want to do it on our own, when we don't want to use God um, to be able to walk alongside us and him to work within us for us to be able to do these things well and show these fruits of the spirit well. Um, and so I think each one of us will be able to look through this passage or have something that comes up in one of these EOCF in the wilds that um, you're going to see that maybe love is the one that you struggle with. Maybe it's um, gentleness, whatever it is. It's going to be something that I think you're going to realize that you're relying a lot on your own ability to do those things and you feel like, yes, I can show love to people, but the way that you love them, is it going to be the way that God has the ability to love you? And so um, I want you guys to take a moment and whoever you're doing this with, think of um, how God loves us and how it's different than how we love others um, out of our own strength and out of our own power and our own hearts. Um, so discuss that really quick with um, whoever you are doing this with um, and then we'll come back to this. <clears throat> All right, so hopefully you guys paused the video and uh, went and had a little discussion. Um, but uh, that's definitely something that we need to realize and recognize as we talk about this topic of love is that um, there is no greater love than the way that God loves. And if we are to try and match and emulate his love, we need him to be with us and be walking with us and guiding us into showing and learning how to love others well and to love deeply. And so we're going to look at John 15, 8 through 17. All right. Um, it says, my father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, I have also loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do not if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants anymore because a servant does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce fruit that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. This is what I command you. Love one another. And so that is um, the golden commandment is love other people. That is something that's talked about all the time. And I'm sure you guys heard it when you were little kids to um, love people and like love your neighbor as yourself, like all of these things. And God says that these commands are great, that it, it has a weightiness to it. And it's important because not only this is how people are going to know 
it, God is walking with us, is that we're going to be set apart by the way that we love one another, the way that we care for other people with such a deep love that is so different. And it's different because it's not a love that comes just from our heart naturally. The Bible definitely talks about how our flesh gets in the way a lot. And it definitely gets in the way when we want to love other people well. But the love that we are showing them, it's coming from a place because God is inside of us, working through us. He um, has sent his spirit to do these things to be able to allow us to grow for us to love other people well and get to such a better place um, and bring that light into the world. Um, I think what's also a really good uh, reminder during uh, this discussion on love is that um, how do we love God well? Um, take a moment and talk about that with your group really quick. How do you love God well and how can we genuinely show love to God? So pause, take a moment. <clears throat> I hope you guys paused. Um, but I think it can be really difficult sometimes because we are never going to be able to match the caliber of how God loves, even with the Spirit working with us, because we're not God. And He is going to love us in such a way that is really hard for people to fathom sometimes. And if you are somebody who that is really hard for you to fathom, I want you to know that you are loved by God so deeply, um, despite anything that you've done in your past, despite who you think you are or what you deserve, you definitely um, are loved by Him. And in turn, we should all be loving each other just like how God loves us despite what um, we do, who we are, and um, continue to work towards that to um, really show people Christ through us. And so I hope that you guys feel encouraged by this, that if this is a fruit of the Spirit that is really hard for you to do, like it's really hard for you to love other people well, to show love to other people, then um, take a moment to think about that. Pray about it and say, God, I don't, I want to love like how you love and I don't know how. Please teach me. Um, and sometimes it can be scary when we pray those kinds of prayers because that means that God is going to um, do a really big work in us because we're allowing an open door um, because God is not going to be able to work with somebody who has a stubborn heart and doesn't want to um, grow. He can't make us because we have the choice of free will, but that's a beautiful thing because we have to be able to fully surrender to walk with him. And that is exactly what the fruits of the spirit is a reflection of, is that it is a reflection of our surrender to know that we need to have God's guidance in everything that we do. The way that we love people, the way that we have joy, the way that we are patient with others, the way that we're gentle or kind, um, whatever it is, those are all reflections of us giving it over to God and asking him to lead us into those things and really genuinely allowing a heart change. And so I hope that this is the beginning of a good journey for you guys to understand and see of the ways that God can get a hold of your heart and help um, guide you to show exactly what fruit of the spirit um, you might be lacking in or um, there might be some, a little kind of light bulb to, for you to realize that like God has really been faithful to you and doing a good work in your heart and that you can see that you are able to love people really well because he um, is working through your heart and that that is a good thing for you to be able to recognize that God is walking with you and he is working in you. Um, so I hope that this is something that is thought evoking for you guys of how you love people well and what are you going to do this week to show that and work towards that. I'm going to challenge you guys um, to really do an act of love towards other people that might be difficult to love. Maybe that's with your family being stuck in quarantine. Maybe that's with a friend who it's just hard sometimes to love them. Um, whatever it is. And even to yourself, you need to be able to love yourself well um, to know uh, that you are loving like how God loves because God wants you to know that you deserve love and that 
comes back to you as well. If you have a self-hatred for yourself, um, you are not working towards uh, this fruit of the spirit. And so this is something that I hope opens up kind of a few things for you to maybe journal about, maybe you talk to your leader about it, you talk to your I and I about it, um, talk to your friend about it, if that's who you feel comfortable with. Um, but I want you guys to know that you are so loved and um, we want to be along with you on this journey as you continue to grow and understand of the ways that God is um, wanting to work through you and the fruits of the spirit that we all have the opportunity to work towards. So, um, Love you guys. I hope you guys have a great week um, and we will see you in next week. Bye.